great. Thank you so much for attending. Once again, this is Michelle Barr with Firefly Business Group, and this is an inventory management view into Acumatica. Today we have selected a few topics um, just to review with you. We hope to keep you only for about 45 minutes at the most, um, and we'll be on to answer questions. But today we're going to review a little bit of the item setup, just some of the screens um, to kind of help explain some of the functionality of the item, the warehouse location and bin functionality, inventory replenishment, warehouse transactions, including um, a robust inventory count. And then at the end of the presentation, we will um, be live answering questions. Um, I will try to monitor if there's any questions in the middle of the presentation. Um, otherwise, we will try to answer most of them at the end. Um, Megan Bellows is going to be doing the presentation today, and I will hand this over to her. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Michelle. Welcome, everyone. Yes, my name is Megan Bellows. I am an ERP consultant with Firefly. Today, I will highlight some of the advanced inventory management features of Acumatica. Everything you will see is out-of-the-box functionality with no customizations or third-party products. I will log in here real quick. So as it logs in, uh, you'll see that the home screen is a dashboard. Dashboards are designed around the user's role in the organization. Here, employees can quickly manage daily tasks. Dashboards contain widgets that have drilled on capabilities to give actionable insights. First, we're going to take a look at item setup within Acumatica. I can use the universal search here at the top. And this is a feature where users can quickly and easily find menu items, transactions, help articles, and files. I will select a stock item. And on the first general settings tab, items have an item class that inserts defaults for the stock item. You can also define lot serial tracking on each item with the lot serial class. This class includes settings for tracking method, which can either be lot serial or not tracked. We also assign a, set an assignment method, which can be when received or when used, and an issue method. We have FIFO, LIFO, sequential, expiration, or chosen by the user when it's sold. For each item, you can set a default warehouse and default sales and receipt locations within that warehouse. Down at the bottom, you see physical inventory settings. These are used for cycle counts, and we'll take a look at these in more detail a little bit later. Switch to the price and cost information. The Acumatica can calculate pricing based on a markup percent per product, as well as monitor sales to ensure a minimum markup. Depending on configuration, the sales order will warn or auto-update the price of an item if the entered unit price is below the minimum markup percent. This percentage added to, can be added to item cost to determine selling price for the item. The default price is used for sales when no other prices are defined for that item. Cost statistics are calculated by Acumatica across all warehouses for the item. The warehouse details displays settings and information for all warehouses the item is stocked in. Contains a link to the item warehouse details where the warehouse specific details can be defined. On vendor details, we can specify vendors from which the item can be purchased. The default vendor can be set and will be used during replenishment. Cross-reference is a place to maintain a list of alternate identifiers used by vendors and customers for the item. This section is also used to store the UPC and barcodes. And we will look at the inventory replenishment later in the webinar as well. 
In addition to standard items, Acumatica supports stock and non-stock kits. A stock kit is a finished good that is assembled and stocked in the warehouse. Only the finished good is picked when the kit is sold. A non-stock kit is a finished good that is not tracked in inventory, rather the components are picked when the kit is sold. Let me take a quick look at an item that is set up as a kit. So a kit or assembled item is marked as a kit during the item setup. Then the components are defined in kit specifications. So if we look at the same computer. Um, kit revisions are supported for stock kits. Acumatica saves the complete history of the kit spec changes. And then at the bottom, the stock components and non-stock components can be defined for any kit. And that's the item overview. Now we're going to move on to warehouses. Acumatica supports a multiple warehouse setup as well as multiple locations within each warehouse. There we go. A little bit of a delay here. Okay. Now once this loads, we'll see a list of warehouses in the system. Throughout Acumatica, you will see similar generic inquiries which display lists of data like this. If we choose one line item and we click on this icon here to the side, Within the inquiry screens, you can see the details of a line item using the side panel feature. Here can we, we can review the warehouse settings and make changes without having to navigate to another screen. The side panel can be expanded and condensed as needed. The warehouse configuration has options for location entry. Do not allow on the fly is a setting where all locations must be configured here in the warehouse setup prior to being chosen in transaction screens. Warn but allow, the users are warned if they enter a location that has not been previously created for the warehouse. And allow on the fly, users can specify a new location within the transaction screens. At the bottom, we have a list of bin locations that are created for each warehouse and configured using the checkboxes to make them available during certain transactions. If you have a location for damaged unsellable product, you would uncheck the box for sales allowed, so product from that location cannot be chosen during a shipment. Additionally, default locations can be set up for the warehouse for receiving, shipping, RMA, and dropship. We'll take a quick look at availability. Item availability within Acumatica can be calculated based on multiple rules with different configurations. The availability calculation rules have many different options to include or deduct quantities from the on-hand quantity to determine availability. Using these rules, each item class can have a unique availability configuration. Now we will switch over and review some of Acumatica's advanced inventory process and transaction functions. With Acumatica, you can configure automated inventory replenishment to cover many possible situations. In addition to purchasing inventory to replenish stock, you can also set up replenishment using a transfer from another warehouse, manufacturing, a drop shipment, or special order. A replenishment class is assigned to each warehouse. Additional replenishment settings are specified for each item class and can be changed at the item level as well. 
we'll take a detailed look at the replenishment with purchase process. We will look at item class setup to review some of the replenishment features. Item classes are created to store default settings as we saw in the beginning for new items. The most settings, and most settings are editable at the item level as well. Click over here. The calculation for demand used during the replenishment process is based on this setting on the item class. So if demand is based on item class settings, Acumatica will calculate demand based on the availability calculation rule specified for the item class. Or if it's hard demand only, it uses a standard calculation, which is sales order allocated plus shipped plus back ordered. Now we'll shift back over to our item screen. The remaining um, parameters are managed for each item. Within the replenishment info tab in the item, you can set the min max quantities used in replenishment manually. Acumatica also offers calculation of replenishment parameters based on a demand forecast using the moving average model. This option calculates demand for a specific future period based on historical sales. For items with the moving average model assigned, you define forecast period type, which is the type of period to be used for the selection of historical data and demand calculation. This can either be quarter, month, week, or day. And you also define periods to analyze. This is the number of periods of historical data to use for calculation. So for this product, we've manually entered the parameter quantities for this computer. You can also look at settings on the vendor tab where you can enter vendor minimum and maximum order quantities, which are also used during the replenishment. Now we'll explore how Acumatica uses this demand forecasting to assign the new min-max values. Here we see a list of items that are set up for a moving average demand forecast model. This process can be run manually or set up in an automatic schedule within process screens. Acumatica has, has an option to add a schedule to perform actions automatically. So anywhere we see the clock, we can hit add and define the criteria for which data we want it to act on and when. So if we choose an item we can process it and Acumatica will calculate the new replenishment settings. Then you can review the calculated settings against the current parameters and apply the new values. So here we'll choose our same item and you can review current versus suggested and process. The newly calculated replenish, per, replenishment parameters are now set for the item warehouse combination. And you can see the results and the de demand forecast process on the item warehouse detail screen. Here we have our new settings that were calculated and entered and our data from our process. So now using these calculated or assigned parameters, you can process replenishment. So if I go into prepare replenishment, we look at the wholesale warehouse. All items that are determined 
to need more stock based on the replenishment parameters we'll show here. These items are set up to be replenished using a purchase from the preferred vendor. So Acumatica will calculate the quantity to process when inventory for an item falls below the reorder point. If our computer item for our computer item, remember that the maximum vendor order quantity was 100. Therefore, if the calculated quantity to process is more than the maximum vendor quantity, the system limits the replenishment to the vendor max. So if we decide we need to order the computer, we'll mark the item and process for replenishment. We've confirmed that the item should be ordered. And now the purchase order can be created. So our purchasing staff would be able to go in and see that this PO is ready to be created. We can select it and process. And it will automatically open our newly created PO. If this is ready to be sent to the vendor, we would Take it off of hold and approve. So our PO has been sent out and now a PO receipt would be created and released when the items are received into the warehouse. So here we could enter the PO receipt when it gets received in. and release that and now our and now our product will be in inventory. The Acumatica replenishment process includes many configurable settings and procedures to meet the unique needs of your company. Acumatica offers direct inventory transactions, which are not based on purchase or sales documents. These are receipts, issues, adjustments, and transfers. We'll take a closer look at inventory transfers today. So these are used for stock movement between warehouses or locations within the same warehouse. There are two types of transfers within Acumatica. A single step is a standard transfer where quantities are immediately available in the receiving warehouse location. A two-step transfer is made in two different steps. The goods are issued from the source warehouse, and then the cost of the items is temporarily recorded in an in-transit account. Finally, the goods are received to a location in the destination warehouse. The two-step transfer is very useful if items are being shipped between warehouses located at significant distances from one another. I will create a new two-step transfer. We're going to send product from our wholesale warehouse to our retail warehouse. Add our product. and our quantities, and then release. When the shipment has left the source warehouse, the cost is removed from the inventory asset account and added to the transit account. So here's the journal that was created. When the transfer shipment is then received at the destination warehouse, an inventory receipt is created. We will load our original transfer, and it will load the information that was on that, and then they would just release. And then that's going to create another journal that we can look at uh, that will credit the transit account and debit the destination warehouse inventory asset account. Acumatica's inventory transaction options allow you to have a real-time view of all inventory. Okay, last we're going to take a look at inventory counts. For stock items, 
a full physical count or cycle counts can be managed with an Acumatica. ABC codes and movement classes can be used to identify categories of stock that may require different management and controls. ABC codes are based on stock value and movement classes are grouped by stock turnover rates. I will demonstrate how Acumatica will assign movement classes based on the turnover rates of the items. First, you set up movement classes with the number of counts per year and the maximum turnover percent for each class. Again, if we look at our stock item, on the item form, there's settings for physical inventory. The PI cycle is where you can manually assign how many times an item is counted per year. The ABC code can be manually or automatically assigned, as, as can the movement class. If the ABC or movement class is manually set on an item, it can be marked as fixed and will not be changed when running the update class, updates class process. So let's take a look at the update movement class. This process will update movement classes based on data from the chosen period. Let's see, fill in our data at the top. So now we can see that we have the current settings and the projected changes based on our data. So as long as that is what we want to put into, pro put into the system, we will process. And when it's done, you'll see that now the current movement class has been changed. If we look at our computer item, we will see that we now have an H movement class assigned. Now that our item class settings are all updated, we can run a cycle count for items in this class. To start a physical count, first the count is prepared. Here you can define what type of count that you're performing. Ours is a movement class cycle count. And when this by frequency option is checked, Acumatica will add all items to the count that are assigned a movement class and are due for a cycle count based on the frequency configured on the movement class. On the other hand, you can manually choose a single class to count. I only want high turnover rates. So when our list of items is complete, we hit generate physical inventory count and the count sheet is generated. And at this point, a snapshot of the inventory at that moment is stored. Physical count tags can then be printed for each item to be used by employees participating in the count. When the count's prepared, inventory for the items included on the count sheet is frozen. No operations are allowed in the system for these items. When all items have then been counted, even if the result entry is not complete, we can select finish counting to allow entry of inventory transactions in the system for the previously frozen items. Now we would enter all of our physical count quantities. The results can be entered manually on, a, on the physical inventory count screen, which does allow multiple users to enter data for the same count at the same time, or we could use our upload option to import from a spreadsheet for the counted quantities into this inventory review screen. I'll just manually do these since there aren't that many.
Okay, so let's say there are a few that we did not count. Uncounted items can be marked as zero quantity or skipped. I'll choose skipped for this example and save my entries. Now say for instance we have a very long list of, of cycle count items and I only want to review items that have a cost variance more than plus or minus $100. I can use Acumatica's filter feature and filters can be used in all inquiry screens within the system and saved for future use. So here I would just add the criteria. I want my estimated variance cost, if it's greater than 100, or if it's less than negative 100. And if I hit apply, you'll see our list shorten. And now I can see all of the items that are that have a high variance that we want to maybe take a look at. So once everything's been reviewed and confirmed, then I would complete my physical count. At this point, a transaction is created to adjust the available quantities and cost of stock items. And here on the adjustment info, I have a link to that. We can take a look at that adjustment that was created. You'll notice that the adjustment is accompanied by a reason code. This supplies the offset general ledger account and sub account and explains the reason for the transaction. So in this case, the reason is the physical inventory count. We can also look at the actual journal and see that it is using our physical inventory adjustment account. So that's the items I have to show today. Acumatica, as you can see, has many valuable tools to help you manage and control your distribution process effectively. Michelle, did okay, we great. have Thank questions? You, um, nice job. Do we have any questions from anybody that's on the call? Otherwise, we appreciate your time. Um, we'll stay on for a couple minutes if there's any questions. And the next webinar we plan to provide is the order processing process. So that would include um, sales order quotes, order entry, shipments, and um, invoicing process. Okay, we have a couple questions coming in. What is the assignment method? So when we're looking at the item setup, Megan, if you wanna go back to an item screen, and we have the assignment method for a product. I'm not sure, Tom, let me, um, I don't remember seeing an assignment method. Now, oh, I know what you're talking about. That was lot serial information. Lot serial uh -oh. is if you are going to um, lot or serialize your items, then does it automatically um, assign um, the serial number, or I'm sorry, does it assign it when the lot serial is received or is it when used? So we don't track it in inventory. We only record it when it's used. Um, when does an order entry shipment hit physical inventory within the system? So there's a couple different options there. It's not really part of today, but I can certainly answer the question. Um, we can make it hit on invoice and or there is an update um, inventory process that we can do within the sales order process to uh, process the shipments prior to invoice. So we have choices and we usually handle that within the um, implementation process. Are kit assembly components available to view, edit from a kit assembly item or via a separate view? So the kit assembly, um, you can 
set up to where things can be, um, what's the word they use, Megan? Um, you could do substitutions here and set them up. Um, so you can do a little bit on the fly within the um, assembly process. The kit process is not. So in Acumatica, kits are, um, they use the same word for what we in Activate call kits or assemblies. The kits, um, they just define it whether it's a stocking or non-stocking kit. And so they will allow you to um, manage the, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, but you can manage the assembly items on the fly, just not the kits. Right, you can set it as the allow substitution. Okay, In anything else? I would unmute you all, but there um, tends to be a lot of feedback and background noise from a lot of customers, so. <laughs> Okay, if there's any other questions from anybody, feel free to email me and we can get that um, for you. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.